You just arrived? Yesterday? Where have you been? <laughs> You've been swallowed up by the kimchi? <laughs> okay, you know what? Who cooked for, who cooked for me today? Oh, all the nuns, yeah? Thank you, huh? Thank you. Uh, it's it's uh, nice. But, uh, you know, I heard the mosquito complain, huh? The mosquito say, Master, why do you also have to eat kimchi? Everybody here eats kimchi already. No different taste, you know? They refused my blood donation this evening. They say we had enough of kimchi and, and ginseng today already <laughs> from the Korean, you know? <laughs> okay, very good. Like this, they don't stink me, huh? And what else do we want? <laughs> We have everything else already, right? Like uh, Nasruddin, right? Yeah? Remember the story? When the king asked him, what would you choose, you know, between virtue and money? He said he chose money. <laughs> Remember? Yes. Okay. So the king would say, oh, I would choose virtue, you know. Of course, he choose what he doesn't have. Huh? <laughs> you like kimchi? Nice, huh? Mm. That's why you sit and you feel <laughs> You want to sit still, but they go inside. <laughs> Strong, no? <laughs> Actually, in Vietnam or in Taiwan, they say, don't give ginseng until, until the person is 60 something. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the day I can eat ginseng, drink ginseng. <laughs> <laughs> Become like the Korean, so strong. <laughs> Welcome home, again. <laughs> Welcome home again. <laughs> yeah, I told you many times we're lucky, hey? Mm. Because we could sit together, huh? Somewhere and meditate. And okay, now I tell you a story to also let you know how lucky we are, huh? Here come. You know, in the old time. When any master come down to earth, he always have to start anew, huh? Why well, in the new time, it's the same, not just old time. But let's talk about old time, yeah, because we know it more from the history, yeah. Like Buddha also had problem with the opposite or the established order of religion. And Jesus, you know, has been crucified like that. And other religion leaders like Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him. <laughs> Peace be upon you too. Mm. The Islam people, when they see each other, they say, Peace be upon you. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, Salamu alaikum and then alaikum salam. Yeah. Salamu alaikum and alaikum salam. Okay. They in my, you return it, you know? Yeah, like, Peace be upon you and peace be upon you too. And uh, peace be upon all of you anyway, yeah, on all the world. Let's hope so. Mm. Also, sometimes they say, uh, may God bless you, or, you know, may God, may God protect you. Very nice, nice greeting, huh? Yeah, very positive. I like it very much. Now, you see, uh, the, the Sikh gurus have also been persecuted. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, probably when he was alive, there wasn't much peace upon him. You see, they've been harassing him from place to place, and that was a terrible time for the Prophet and his followers. Even Buddha huh, has been also harassed by the established religious uh, authorities. Yes, this happened everywhere. Jesus has been crucified because of established religious orders as well. I don't know why it's like that. I mean, the religious uh, society is supposed to teach the same like Jesus did, or Prophet Muhammad did at that time, or Buddha did, or Guru Nanak, or whatever the Prophet might have been. Uh, but uh, whenever they see them preaching, you know, expounding the doctrine, uh, they, they just don't like it. I don't understand how a religious person who preach the same doctrine, yeah? Uh, who proclaim and profess also that he is uh, 
you know, um, believing in that God, one God, and who are repeating the same uh, teaching from ancient time. And the new uh, prophet or master came, he does the same. Yeah. But I don't know why they always have to persecute the prophet. I don't understand this. You know, maybe because they have not realized what they are preaching. Yes. They keep saying, God, God inside you, God inside you, but they're looking for outside, <laughs> for God. And just like the guy who lost the key in the dark alley or garage and then went out under the lamp in, on the street to look for the key there because it's brighter there. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this is the working of this world that even though they proclaim that they're preaching the same thing, they have been always against any prophet who even not just preach the truth, but can prove it to you. Yeah? And perhaps they have not realized what they're talking about. They're just talking. Yeah? Just like repeating the, the, the recipe for apple pie. Yeah? But never make one. Yeah? And never know how. <laughs> never taste one. Yes. So he just... Uh, is reciting the recipe. So when somebody make an apple pie and let everybody else taste it, here is the apple pie. No, no, it's not possible. Not possible. I have never seen an apple pie myself. I can only talk about the apple pie. So how can you say this is apple pie? You see what I mean? Well, this is a problem. It's not only that. It's jealousy, huh? Human competitiveness, thinking, what? And look at him. Eh? He looked like that. He don't even wear the religious uh, robe, you know, with the head uh, so high like this, and with the tassel coming down here, and he has to walk this way, that way. How come he doesn't do anything like that? And so many people follow him. Sabapalatet <laughs> means something wrong <laughs> with the head. And also, look at her. She don't look like anybody that we know, you know, the holy person. How come everybody follow her? This must be something not good, you know? At least not good for them, <laughs> not good for their business. Yes, therefore, since ancient time, the prophet always suffer so much. Eh? Mm. So now not only he suffer, his disciple also suffer, eh? You know that, right? Yeah, sometimes they persecute them uh, terribly. And here is one of the stories. Now, maybe we meditate more and the more uh, people vegetarian, then uh, the world will be uh, more peaceful and easier for the spiritual practitioners. Now, this is a story about a boy who belonged to the Sikh tradition, Sikh religion at that time, and about his unwavering faith in his belief. Yeah. As you know, uh, many of the Sikh gurus have been kind of uh, persecuted, yes, by whatever government at that time uh, because of, of course, misunderstanding or maybe because of the zealousness of the uh, religious established order at that time. Okay. So they persecute them a lot and their disciples also. And then some disciples have to even to use arms, you know, to protect their family and all that. Just like the late Islam or a similar. It's a very bad thing that happened to them. Now, this is a story about the, the boy who believed in Sikhism at that time and in his gurus. In India, in the time of King Faruksia, the king was fighting against the Sikhs of the Punjab. I told you, huh? Yes, because the king either belonged to one religion or another. And then if somebody preached something else and not from the book, <laughs> then uh, the king thinks that he has the right to uh, uh, destroy that uh, infidels, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who doesn't believe what he believes. Yes, it happened all the time. And it is a very sad affair because everybody thinks they believe in God. Nah? But then for, in the name of God, 
they're killing each other. Mm. I mean, at those times, yeah. Everyone who fought with each other for religious belief, they did that often because <laughs> the same God. You know, the same apple pie. Mm. It's just the one who bake it and eat it, and the other one uh, recites the recipe all day long, and then fighting against the one who can taste the apple pie, because because he has never tasted it before. That's why it is. All right. So the king Faruxia was fighting against the six of Punjab, hoping to be able to rid his kingdom of them all together. Can you believe that? He wants to really get rid of all of them. So to his army and even to all others, he had issued orders that every Sikh that could be captured should at once be beheaded. Ah, oh, you see how brutal it was. Just in the name of religion, you understand me? And, and of course the king, he's powerful. Huh? The king is the one who can chop your head anytime he wants to, in those times, yes. So if the king is not enlightened, and he's also like a fanatic as well, then of course, <laughs> wow, 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 you can imagine how difficult it is for the Sikh gurus and his disciples to be able to survive at that time, yeah? But faith always prevails. And no matter how difficult, people have always believed and follow those masters, yeah? Sikh or Jesus or Prophet Muhammad, Buddha, etc. No? Nothing can stop them. Nothing. So the king offered a reward of 200 rupees to each and every one who brought in the head of a Sikh. Oh, terrible. Yeah, this is like a witch hunt time in the medieval time, no? Well, you know, this is very dangerous even because you can just behead anybody if you want to and bring the head into the king and say, here's the sick. How can you prove it also, you know? Of course, the sick at that time, they have their mark, no? They have a bangle and they have a comb and they have a turban and they have short pants, yeah? And a sword. I guess because at that time, they have to defend themselves somehow. Not like they intend to kill anybody, but just, you know, look like I also have weapons or think twice before you kill me. Something like that, or think twice before you hurt me. I guess just self-defense, yeah? Okay. The same with the time of a Prophet Muhammad. Nah? The Prophet has never preached to his disciples to go out and fight to anybody. Yeah. But they just have to defend their kids and kin, you know? And they just have to have something to show to the enemies, at least that I have also. So one of us is going to get hurt, you know? Maybe I get hurt, but you also will get hurt. So, uh, you know, maybe leave us alone, something like that. Well, that's your hoping, you know? They were hoping. Okay, now, as luck would have it, the king's army in the Punjab one day captured nearly 500 Sikhs. Oh, God the number that we are right now. Can you imagine all of you get beheaded at that time? Terrible. Who were hiding in a forest. They are hiding in a forest already. Still the king army came in there and hunted them out. You know, this is a terrible thing about fanatism, yeah? I mean, if they're doing something wrong, yes, okay, huh? But they're not, yeah? The Sikhism, it's just like every other religion now. You know, preaching righteousness, yes, vegetarianism, yeah, contact with God. But that is the thing, you see. Most established religions at that time doesn't preach like that because the master has been gone, so no contact with God. So now the Sikh disciples say, I have contact with God, you know. Uh, or they say, come to my guru and you can have direct contact with God. Then, of course, they cannot bear it. How possible? Because it's been a long time since their religious founder been gone, yes? And nobody passed down this uh, direct lineage, yeah, di direct link to God anymore. So they're just reciting the, uh, the teaching of the old prophets and uh, claiming that it is a religion 
and everybody else who doesn't believe in that or who doesn't do the same stuff are atheists or uh, whatever. Whatever excuse, whatever name they give them, they have to be eliminated oh, in such a way, my God. Okay, they were hiding in the forest, yeah? All of them were brought uh, to Delhi, Delhi, the capital of India. It still is. And taken into the presence of the king, who immediately ordered that they be beheaded. My God, such a king. I don't believe this. I don't understand this. I mean, people don't have to believe what you believe, huh? Maybe you don't contact them, you don't believe what they believe, and you don't uh, protect them or give them any privilege, but to behead somebody just because he believes something else, this is too much, huh? Hmm. I can't believe this. But it happened, you know, in history of, of our human race. In the group of the prisoners, there was a small sick boy who was the only male child in his entire family. You know how important it is for them, right? The male, you know, to carry out the, the family bloodline. Yes, so he was the only one in the family. His mother had followed the prisoners to Delhi. She has not been captured, I guess. Yeah, they capture everybody and the boy, but not the mother of the boy. And had gone in tears to the wife of the vizier, begging her to persuade her husband to plead with the king to spare her child's life. So this mother even know the wife of the vizier. Vizier, I guess, they're like prime minister, okay? Yes. So the king said, I will set the boy free, provided he will say that he is a non-sick. Of course, then he will have an excuse, huh? Or oh, he doesn't want him to, to be a sick believer, huh? Okay. A special body of guards brought the boy before the king. And the king demanded in a very haughty voice, boy, to save your life, you must declare yourself to be a non-sick. But at this, the boy cried out at the top of his voice, I'm a sick, I'm a sick. Then turning to the executioner, he said in a firm and resolute manner that brook no denial. Sir, please be so good as to behead me at once. I do not wish my mother to suffer any more suspense on my account. He want his mother just, you know, to have it done with. So that at least when he dies, she knows he died anyway, so she won't suffer and worry whether he will die or not. That is also agonizing, you know, waiting, waiting, and don't know what happened. Don't know if your son's going to be spared or not. You see what I mean? This is a terrible thing also for a mother to undergo. So he begged the executioner just to behead him and have it done with. So this is a type of faith that a Sikh, Sikh means disciple, huh? Okay. Should have in his Satguru. Satguru means true master, eh? enlightened master. So that even if it is a question of his, losing his life, he will still persist in his faith and devotion to the Master. It is like that. And Guru Nanak said something like, a true disciple is without hope or fear. He who has no fear of death is a disciple perfectly harmonized. Yes. Well, it's easy to say, <laughs> but when it comes to life and death, we sometimes shock ourselves, yeah, out of uh, thinking whether or not we should go like that. Uh, when Jesus was uh, captured, you know, by the Roman, yes, uh, one of his disciples also denied him three times. I don't know why he denies him. It's just, it's just the nature of human beings, you know? Mm. 
when it's suddenly confronted with something that is going to annihilate the the so-called existence that he knows. Yes, even though such a disciple like Peter huh, should have known better. Maybe he denies it so that he may be not having to bear witness against Jesus as well. It's not like maybe he's not fearing for his life. Yeah, but if the uh, Romans know that, oh, I know this man, then maybe he has to testify, say, okay, he's the master, the so-called master that you want uh, to catch. And he cannot tell lie, you know? So he'd rather tell, tell a small lie, say, I don't know him. Then later having to, you know, deny that he is a master even. You understand me? Or uh, uh, testify, uh, tell the truth, like he is a master, then endanger his master's life. You see what I mean? So I don't think... Uh, that uh, Peter really fear for his own life. I think he fear for his master's life. And in this situation, he rather tell a little lie, a white lie, to save him, instead of having to tell the truth and harming his master. I think that's what it is. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. I don't think... Uh, a disciple with uh, St. Peter's status would fear for his life. Yeah? Would you? No. Okay, that's it for now. I'm glad you have come and bring kimchi. And <laughs> nice to see me. Why? You've seen me not long ago, right? Many times. Many times. Yeah. <laughs> Poor girl. What are you doing right now? How are your tempo doing? I'm going through a lot of stuff, Master. It was a difficult time. Difficult time again? I never heard you were going to easy time. <laughs> Ever since I knew you. What is now? <laughs> <laughs> no, this time it's my thing and it's my family and it's my insecurity. Money? But that has always been the case. <laughs> you borrow something and something like that? Um, you cannot have a small apartment or a smaller house? I was, I was doing very well financially last year. Yeah, and then? And then between November and February last year, I lost a huge amount of money. Why? Because um, I, I didn't have enough experience and I started with a new business. <sighs> Have enough experience to see the warning signs. Oh. Oh my goodness. And now you start from scratch again. And, and now I'm really in trouble. <laughs> oh, poor guy. How much did you lost? Seven million. US dollar? No. How much is that in US dollar? It's a million dollars. A million dollars. One million dollars? That's a lot. <laughs> 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 One million, you can buy a lot of stuff. I'm so sorry. Why did you start so big like that? I was doing very well. I mean, I really did very well. I mean, then why you have to start a new business? Because I did real estate for 18 years and I was tired. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't get inspired. Oh, God. But life is tiring, you know. Tiring is still better than one million dollar loss. Oh, jeez. Don't worry. Money gone is sometimes better than life gone. In Vietnam, we say if you lost some money, then you spare your life. Maybe that's maybe your life cost one million dollars. Who knows? You are expensive, you. <laughs> you expensive thing, you. Huh? Yeah. Getting more and more expensive all the time. First time I heard you just some hundred thousand only. Now it's gone to one million dollars <laughs> already. But that's the, that's the funny thing, Master. Last time was when I lost the money with the insurance company, and oh. that was in '97. Mm. And then you you really really helped me to become very wealthy. And then when mm. I was wealthy, you forget um, to be careful. Right? Well, I I don't know if it was also karmic because I had a very bad fight with my brother. Right. If you have money, you have bad fight. Is that no, what it is? We, we, I had a lot of money and things were going very well. And then mm. one day when I came back from Taiwan, mm. 
um, I felt inspired to include my brother in the business with me to, yeah. to encourage him. Yeah. And then we ended up having a very big fight. And I don't know if, if that, the karma from that fight is what actually caused me to lose all that money. Maybe not. <laughs> or if it was just my own lack of concentration. Well, maybe that money doesn't belong to you. Or maybe it goes so that you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, who knows? Maybe we can always start it again. I told mm. you the story of a millionaire who lost a lot of money, and then he do the sponge bath with his wife for three years, and then he bought the bakery, and then later he, you know, still sponge yeah. bath for many years in the behind the the business, uh, saving the money for cars, saving even bus fare, everything. They just eat, you know, cold food together mm. in that back of the. Uh, business for three, four years, yeah. and then bought another bakery and another bakery and become millionaire again. Mm. Just a bakery, even. Yeah, because they work hard, and whatever they earn, they save. That is the thing, you know? Uh, you save one dollar, that means you earn one dollar also. Similar, yeah. Uh, even no tax, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, wow, that was a lot, huh? I'm sorry to hear that. And you still come here? <laughs> and you and you have all the jewelry all over you that, like that, that. That was when I was still rich. <laughs> I could buy your jewelry. <laughs> okay, keep it for souvenir. <laughs> Remember your rich time, huh? Yeah. Mm. It's just master. You know, your mind plays tricks, re- tricks with you, and you really think that your level has dropped so low, and you're being punished by God, and you think really negative thoughts, and I think that's the more difficult part to actually get out of. It's not so much that you've lost the money and you've got to let go, but you've actually just that you have to be more positive in yourself. And that was really the difficulty. And then, of course, when you first told us about the global warming, it was all the shock all on top of everything else. But now I'm much better about the global warming, thanks to your grace. Mm. And, I mean, I'm coping with my financial situation. It's just I have to struggle it's with It's another global mind. warming at home. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Individual level. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, yes. Yeah. We have no fear, whatever. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, okay. Better. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You feel more comforted and more uh, calm, you know? No, Master, I was just going to ask, what is the situation now with global warming? Is there any further news you have for us? Are we winning against it? (laughs) How many more people vegetarian? I don't know, baby. I didn't look recently. Mm. But, uh, you know, at one time I thought we made it. When we first came out with all the SOS, you know, we had like one-fifth of them. But then they fall back, you see? Mm. Even after it has been proved that a cigarette, for example, is harmful to the human being, they still try to prove the, <laughs> the opposite, you know? Something like that. And even scientifically speaking already, they still try to make something out of, you know, of nothing, you see? So uh, even now, people still make all kinds of excuses not to go veg, yeah, some people. So I, I thought we made it already, and then no. You know, the the force of bad karma is so strong that it pulled them back, you know? It's like a big tidal wave, you know? You were swimming, you're almost at the shore already, and then it come in and swoop you back into the sea, and then it started, you know, almost anew again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're working, okay? We're working, and I hope that when the critical mass is uh, stabilized, then maybe we have better results. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production, rabies, anthrax, sleeping sickness, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola reston virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus, blue tongue disease, E. coli, Salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease, or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk, pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, 
diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility, eating just one serving of meat per day, increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least one trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Increased childhood cancers and adult reproductive cancers from hormones in meat. Colon rectal cancer. Over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Uses up to 70% of clean water. Pollutes most of the water bodies deforests the lungs of the earth, uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, causes world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Cowpox from milking cows. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. For help quitting, please visit. I think it's a little bit stabilized now. It just, we didn't reach the critical mass yet, you know? And uh, it takes some time to, to know whether it is stabilized or not. You see what I mean? Sometimes, like, people come to my lecture and immediately they start vegetarian diet, yeah? And they even got initiation and continue vegetarian diet even for a while. And then uh, friends, family, business, travels, inconvenience or habits, you know, pile back on them and then some of them fail, remember? Yeah, uh, yeah, huh? You have that, yes, of course. And then maybe sometime later on they return, you know? It's not just uh, our group, you know, many people outside also, they follow some other tradition, they became vegetarian, but then they fell back, yeah? And then after I saw a Supreme Master Television talking about SOS, yeah? And also about the vegetarian diet and the consequences for the global warming and the health of human beings. And now that we have all kind of I tell them to collect all kind of evidences from scientists, from uh, doctors, yeah, and all that. So when they read that and they heard we're talking about vegetarian diet again, then they return to vegetarian and after many years. Yes, I even met one in Monaco last time when we had a little group meditation in Monaco. I met one person there. She's from Canada, yeah. Say five years ago, she was vegetarian for a long time. And then now she's not. You, you understand me? Many years time, long, long time vegetarian. But I'm sure she changed now. Because I tell you, you better return to vegetarian diet. I'm sure she would have. But the thing is, people is not infallible. Yeah? 
they change sometimes. It depends on whether they are strong or not in their mind, in their willpower, or if they keep in good company or not. Yes, if they keep in good company with you, you go group meditation every weekend. That's why I told you, please go group meditation. And you are together, you see? You see? Like, uh, like this, it's together, huh? It's difficult to break, huh? You see what I mean? Even just three, or just two of them, difficult to break, yeah? But one. See this? Easy, yeah? It's just a little wood, you know. It's not karate, don't worry. I won't use it on you. <laughs> I will only break your ego if necessary. Yes. You understand me? Yeah, okay. So if people fall, maybe because they're lonely, you know, they're alone and nobody support them, and they don't have this uh, group supporting energy, and they have to go out, socialize with, uh, you know, the world. Most of them are meat eaters. And slowly, one, one at a time, a little bit at a time, one bite at a time, then they reverse the, the meat-eating habit. Understand that? Yeah. It's, it's to feel sorry for them. That's why I say go group meditation. You be stronger together. Yes? You be stronger together. You see, the wall is made up with many bricks. If it's one brick, it won't be so strong. It won't be so strong like that. Yeah. <laughs> So group meditation is important. Until you're strong by yourself, then you're not waver. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, but when you're a little tree like this, huh? anybody can hurt you, yeah? But when you grow into such a big, <laughs> you know, an ancient tree, difficult to, difficult to cut you down. Eh? Nowadays, people even protect those trees. So grow into such a big one, then we'll be protected. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah? One day we'll be protected. Eh? Most recently, I spent um, some time in Africa to record for Supreme Master TV. Mm. And in the last country I was at was in Gabon. And something happened, and I'm not feeling very good about it, and I'm not sure how to deal with it. Um, we went there, and the brother that went with me knew people there. So he organized the car and blah, everything that we need to, to mm. drive around. Yeah. And uh, initially, I didn't feel very good about it, but finally, I just went. I thought, no, yeah, you just, yeah. just go. Yeah. And, um, well, it turned out these people that we borrowed the car and did all this stuff for us, they owned a company, a foresting company, that mm. cut down trees. Oh, God. And... Uh, so I we do. went with the opposite people. Yes. Okay, but you could convert them. You could tell them, don't do it again, at well, least. They, they spoke Chinese. Uh -huh. And um, so we did this whole trip. And finally, I felt really sick about this. And I, I knew why. And I didn't know how to fix it. I had like $200 on me. And I gave it to this guy to give to them to say, this is for me, for the car, everything. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like I'm dragging this box of karma or something. Yeah. I don't know if it's my mind or... Well, no, at least you tell them, don't do this. At yeah. least you are there to convert them, to yeah. change them. Yeah. Not everybody born sane. Yeah. Even the saints are born sometimes be affected by the environment. You must know in Africa, uh, the country is poor, mm -hmm. difficult to find job. Cutting trees already not so gruesome as a cutting dogs and all kind of things. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. They do all kind of things in this world. Sometimes even for fun. Go out hunting, chop down somebody's head, just for fun, you know, some ducks or some poor helpless creature. And call that manly, you know, sport. So do not blame those people. You should have talked to them and say, look, I know, you know, it's, it's your job to be there to to change them, not, not to, to let them make you feel bad like that. The other brother, I think he spoke to them um, mm. because they spoke Chinese. They're from China or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. I just don't feel very okay <laughs> with it. Well, you should have talked to them, you know? Mm. The whole world is not okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Where do you find okay, you tell me? Anywhere <laughs> it's okay. I'm Except not okay. within our group huh? mm. and within spiritual, other spiritual group. Where else is okay? Mm. Hmm? Where people are not connected with God is not okay. Mm. Even though maybe it look okay on the surface, you know? You know, a lot of people, they don't understand that cutting down forests is something that they should not do. 
The thing just cut in the trees. Besides, it's not even uh, their initiative. They just work for some big bosses somewhere. You see what I mean? And they contract it even internationally. So he, he thinks he's doing an honest job. Yeah, get paid to cut down some trees. You understand me? You should mm, actually not uh, condemn people so quickly. Therefore, you feel bad. Of course, you don't like it because you know it's not a good thing that they have done. But you should turn around and know why they did it. They just don't know. Just like most people, they eat meat, they don't see how the cow or the pig has been killed in such uh, inhumane and cruelty. Yeah? And people who wear fur do not see how they, you know, beat the head of an innocent baby seal, for example, like that, just to get a little piece of fur to adorn some temporary body. You understand what I mean? Something like that. The two ends is very far from each other. The one end is killing, yeah? And the other end is beautiful product, already made, uh, you know? So nothing, nothing that can evoke their feeling of guilt or pity for the animals. When they see a beautiful fur coat, they say, oh, I want that. And the husband have money, bought it for her, just to please her, you see? And she want to wear it, just to please people's eyes and to herself, to make herself look beautiful. So the intention is good. It's just the other end, they don't realize it. They cannot see it. And it's not immediately hit them that some poor creature had to die in such a cruel way in order for, for that fur coat to be made or for that piece of meat to be on your table, for example, like that. So people don't know, you know, least of all these cutting wood people, since uh, time immemorial go in the forest, chop wood to make fire and all that, and sell it to people, it's a very normal occupation, yeah? It's just right now, they do it en masse. They chop forests just to raise cattle, yeah? Or do all kind of thing that is not uh, very helpful to the world, mm-hmm. yeah? But otherwise, for them, it's a normal job. Mm-hmm. They don't think anything about that. You see what I mean? Because they don't know much about global warming. (laughs) Many people in more powerful position even don't even know about global warming or don't want to know or is having difficult time connecting the global warming to deforestation and cutting their trees or or eating that piece of meat. You see what I mean? Many people don't have that connection. So how would you blame a poor and, you know, uh, probably even uneducated guys who chop some wood over there, okay? You had to be the good one. You have to tell him all the truth about wood cutting, at least, and maybe he knows it, and then he think about it. You see, instead you just <laughs> cut them off like that. It's not too good. Next time, do better, okay? Try not to blame people too much because everybody is doing something that they don't know what they're doing. That's why they kill Jesus, yeah? That's why they uh, prosecuted uh, Prophet Mohammed and Buddha and other guru even. The story I just told you now. Just to believe in something, you get your head chopped off. No matter if that religion is good. At that time, the Sikhism just teach people to do good also. You see, just, uh, you know, like the five precepts don't steal. I don't see in the Grand Sahib, you know, the book. The Bible of the Sikh that teach people to go out still or kill anybody or even kill animals or do anything wrong at all. You see what I mean? So Sikhism was very good then. And still you have your head chopped off. Yeah? And the king, supposed to be the leader, you know, the wise one, the one who has all the education possible that afford to him. When you're a king, you can have anything you want. You can have all the knowledge, yeah? You can get all the books or or study anything you like. So he should be a very knowledgeable one. But look how ignorant he was. Just kill anybody that belonged to Sikhism, yeah? Even a little boy like that. Do you understand me? So being a king is not always good. If you don't use your power properly, that king would have gone to hell. I'm sure he must have gone to hell for doing such a thing. Yeah?
So many people don't realize. Can you imagine a king, yeah, who have all the knowledge offered to him, yeah, who have whatever he want. He can get any book he want, however rare. He can study anything he want, however remote, yeah. And he's still so ignorant like that. How would you blame a small woodcutter in Africa? He's a poor guy. His family needs money. And he did not think cutting trees is anything wrong. He just cut one, two, three every day. He did not connect it with the whole global warming or anything else. Because it's just his job, he thinks like that. He did not even know. Nobody even told him anything. Do you understand now? Okay. Next time, do better, okay? Okay, you meditate now. I'm always around. We're always together, okay? Good, 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 good. I'm right here, okay? I'm running around all day with you, right? Thank you. You're welcome. You're beautiful people. Thank you. Vegetarianism in Religion. The Baha'i Faith. Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i writings of some aspects of health and healing. Buddhism. All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra. Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth, there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves, which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state. Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt teachings of the saints. Christianity, meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them, Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague, Holy Bible. Confucianism, all men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others, the superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood. And if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, 
whore of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood. I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Okay, good, good. Where from? Australia. Australia. Tell me where you're from. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? Oh. Panama. Panama. Welcome. New Zealand. New Zealand. Panama. Panama. Iran. 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 Oh. <laughs> mm, salam alaikum. <laughs> salam. <laughs> salam. <laughs> Brazil. Brazil. Ohio, USA. Ah, oh, USA, USA, Puerto Rico, USA. Australia, Australia Brisbane. Yes, it's same, same. Australia, Melbourne. Australia, Melbourne. You do look like Australian. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Vancouver, Canada. Oh, very nice right now. Huh? Mm. New Zealand. New Zealand? Bangkok? You do look like Thai people. <laughs> look at the typical Thai. <laughs> Brazil, yeah. Australia. Australia? USA. USA? USA. USA. Behind there. New Zealand. Vancouver Canada. Vancouver, Canada. Next one? Argentina. Argentina. Oh, bienvenido. New Zealand. New Zealand. Tunisia. Tunisia. Oh, salam. <laughs> See, two of you, Tunisia. Made friend already. Ah, oh, wonderful. See, I dig out some rare gems. <laughs> Paraguay. Paraguay, oh! <laughs> Welcome! Any rare subject? Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Wow! <laughs> Panama. Panama, also a little rare, yeah. <laughs> Where from? Brazil. Brazil. Uh, South America, but where from? Uh, Brazil, where? Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo? Goiânia. Okay, welcome. Hmm? Mm. All right. Any rare jewels somewhere else? Welcome. Anything special? No? You. you. Same old. <laughs> okay. Now let's uh, have a story. This is a Vietnamese story, but I translate it into English. <laughs> okay, this is uh, 
the story about uh, different angles, yeah? The truth from different angles. <laughs> there were three persons, tourists, uh, walking around in a forest, uh, looking around. And uh, it's a very nice weather that day. Yeah, the sky is blue and clear, and the wind is so nice and cool, and the scenery around is very uh, calm and refreshing. Yeah. So three of them just walking, walking, and then they arrive at uh, the foot of the mountain. And then suddenly they look up on the top, on the top of the mountain, and they saw a guy standing there, like a statue, just standing there. So immediately the first one said, I betcha <laughs> this guy is looking for his dog that might have been uh, lost in this kind of dense forest. <laughs> so the second guy say, no, no, I don't think so. You know what? I think he might be waiting for someone. So the third person say, ah, uh, you're both wrong. You know? Both of you are wrong, I think. This guy, huh? According to me, I'm sure this guy is standing there just uh, breathing because he likes the, the fresh air of the mountain and the forest. Okay. So the uh, three of them begin uh, arguing. <laughs> three of them, each one thinks they, they have the reason, you know, that they are right and the other ones are all wrong. So they become heated arguments. My goodness, <laughs> just because of a poor guy standing there. It's none of their business, see what I mean? <laughs> this is a typical of human mind, yeah? Uh, there's nothing to do. <laughs> they make things up, and then they begin to make trouble with each other. <laughs> All right, now, then after a while, they're tired. They say, okay, we uh, better all climb up to the, to the top of the mountain and ask this guy why he is standing there. Oh, my God, how dare he? <laughs> how dare he stand in there and make trouble for the three people? All right, the way to the, uh, the mountain top is very difficult, you know? They didn't know uh, the, the correct way, so they just uh, fumbled themselves and climbing up with rock and trees and all that, climbing up, just to know why the guy was standing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, but a lot of people do this kind of thing, you know? I mean, they waste their time for nothing. And I tell you what, <laughs> uh, some people just climb up even without any guy standing there. <laughs> you know, right? And sometimes they even perish, you know, I mean, it's for fun. They climb up the mountain, you know that, huh? So don't laugh, there are such people. Okay, now they all climb up. Wow! Take them half a day <laughs> to climb to the mountain top. Wow, they made it. Not too bad. Oh, the first guy. Arrive immediately. Ask him, "Hey, man, <laughs> is that right that you are standing here and looking around for your dog, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so the stranger on the top of the mountain say, "No, I don't have even a dog." <laughs> Can you imagine? Suddenly, guess that he has a dog. Don't even know the guy. So the guy said, "No, I don't have a dog." So the, the second guy says, see, see? And he say, okay, I think you're standing there waiting for your friend. Is that correct? And the stranger say, no, I am not waiting for anybody. <laughs> ah, the third guy said, I told you. Right. <laughs> He's so happy. He say, told you? Huh? You both wrong. Now, I think he's standing there because he loves this kind of fresh air and he wants to come here to take as much fresh air as possible. So the guy, what did he say? No? no? If you 
go in the mountain and forest. You don't, you don't breathe in fresh air. Then what would you do? Why no? So, oh, all right, maybe. So when you go to the mountain, you don't breathe the fresh air. What do you do? You block your nose. <laughs> Uh, what else? Do you listen to the silence or to the nature sounds? Nature silence sound? Mm, of the view? To get away from people. Uh, to get away from people? <laughs> Elevate your heart to heaven. Elevate your heart to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> so serious. Got lost? <laughs> Got lost. <laughs> so these are different angles. So it's a story. Different angles. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Exercise? Exercise? <laughs> oh, smart people. Mm. <laughs> He shook his head, the stranger from the top of the mountain, he shook his head. So the three tourists all asked him at the same time, then what are you standing here for? What is the reason for standing here on top of the mountain? So <laughs> what does the stranger answer? Tell me. Now you have second chance <laughs> to, to have three cakes or from my lap. <laughs> Watching the three coming up. He didn't know they were coming up. He was dropped by a helicopter. By a helicopter? <laughs> a good imagination. To be one with the mountain. To be one with the mountain. Wow. <laughs> to elevate the heart to heaven. Yeah. To be one with the mountain. He wanted a secret uh, rendezvous. He won a secret rendezvous? Oh, who knows? Yeah. He wants to see the view. He wants to see the view. That's already done. He just wants to be alone. He just wants to be alone. He's flying. He's flying? He's depressed and he's thinking about jumping. <laughs> oh, oh, he wants to commit suicide. Yeah. Choco. He was in his home. He was in his home? Yes. He was lost and he was trying to locate his home down. He was lost? He already say, okay. What? He's looking at the world. He's looking at the world. What else? Who else? I think I put the cake back. He wants a different point of view. Huh? Yes, ma'am. He's looking for the highest God. The highest God? <laughs> the highest God from the mountain? Oh, sure, it cannot be higher than that. <laughs> he wants to be one with God. He wants to be one with God. Why, you guys really have Zen problem. <laughs> the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit? Really? I thought it's not. He's hiding from his wife. He's hiding from his wife. <laughs> He's fed up with the world. He's fed up with the world. <sighs> <laughs> Too bad. Okay, okay. Last chance. What? No. You're just scratching your head, right? Okay. He's waiting for the teacher is coming to ask him what, why you are doing here. Oh, he's waiting for the three people come up and ask him why you're doing things? Is he having lunch? He's having lunch? Breatharian. Breatharian? <laughs> Possible. A <laughs> <laughs> bad reception downstairs. <laughs> he probably checking his antenna up there. <laughs> possible, possible. Had no reason. Had no reason. Yeah. Good idea. Come here. Ah. <laughs> Well, it's also not fair because you all told all the reason already, so <laughs> so he has nothing else to say, so he said no reason. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> okay. It's just good luck, okay? Don't be <laughs> don't be depressed, okay? <laughs> He's the last guy, he has no more reason, so he said no reason. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> You should have waited until the last, <laughs> the last minute. Then everybody tell everything, and master throw the cakes away already. Then you say, I oh, no reason. Then, <laughs> then you win. Okay, tell you what, this is correct. Yeah. The guy shook his head. Yeah, and laughed out loud. Yeah. 
and saying that uh, <laughs> I stand here because I want to stand here. <laughs> I have no reason. I have no purpose. <laughs> what is your business that you ask so many questions? <laughs> okay. So you see, this is typical of our mind. Yeah? Anything, we just have to nose into it. Uh, why? What? Uh, where? How come? Hmm? Understand me? Sometimes there's no reason at all. Remember, you see the film called Forrest Gump? Yes. Ah, similar. Oh my God, the American, you should have known that. <laughs> the guy keep running, running, remember? Yes. And everybody run after him and all the journalists, the television. <laughs> why are you running? Uh, why not? <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes uh, people are too, too busy body. Yeah, like these three people. We are laughing, but we are like that, huh? I mean, mostly we busy ourselves for nothing, yes. That's why, you know, the world people, they don't have time for meditation. They're busy uh, with uh, irrelevant things. If we're busy, important thing, okay, but they don't know the priority, you know? We have only like 24 hours a day, yes. And we have to put priority. What thing we have to do first, yeah? And, and then what is important or not important? If not important, forget it. Even not important question, don't ask, yeah? Not important task, don't do. Not important place, don't go. Not important things, don't talk about, yeah? Otherwise, we will never have time, yeah? Never have time. Is it true that sometimes people come and bother us, you know, and make us uh, busy for nothing? So you, you just have to know when to say no, eh? <laughs> Tell them when, eh? Say, sorry, I, I got to do something. Yeah, it's true, no? Because if you don't do anything, you go meditate. That's also doing something. That's the most important job in the world, yeah? Sometimes because we're busy, we even have to uh, sacrifice that. So anytime, if some people are overstaying, they're welcome or talking nonsense and uh, uh, wasting your time, just say, sorry, I really have to go. Go where? <laughs> go in your bathroom, meditate. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you sit in the living room, then you go in the bathroom. <laughs> Maybe uh, climb out of the window, go somewhere else. Yeah, sometimes people just don't leave you alone, hey? Eh? Yeah. And sometimes people come in the name of helping you, but they make more trouble, you know? Just go to stick around, uh, ask nonsense, and undo what you're doing. <laughs> you have to do it again. All kind of people. And the mind is like that. It's truly a nuisance, truly a nuisance. But if we don't have the mind, then it's also difficult for us to function in this world. Yeah? Yes. If we are mindless, also no good, is it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a very, very cool story, huh? <laughs> a lot of people, you know, are the same when they want to find out the truth, they want to look for, search for the truth, but they're looking elsewhere. Yeah, they're distracted from the real uh, goal and real purpose. It's also no good. And that's why most people so distracted, you see? The simple truth is right here, huh? It's right inside you. But looking everywhere, mountain, you know, river, uh, sun, the moon, and churches, <laughs> temples, uh, whatever, yeah, that uh, we believe in. In Vietnam, we have a saying that uh, uh, the Buddha in your home uh, is not uh, uh, holy. <laughs> It doesn't respond, so you have to go to the temple uh, to beg for the same Buddha, you know. Maybe bigger statue, but <laughs> same name, <laughs> Sekamoni Buddha, yeah? People sometimes uh, in their home, they have an altar, you know, they have a Buddha, a Buddha statue, and they also put a flower there. But mostly they go to the temple to beg for a favor, yeah. Mm, what it means is not necessarily uh, physical like that. Like, if you know a person too well, sometimes you take him or her for granted. Like, oh, I know her, she's nobody, yeah? 
she is just my sister, <laughs> or she is just my mother, <laughs> or she is just uh, a colleague, you know. It's not a, a position, eh? It's not the appearance. It's something that person has. But if you're too close and you know that person physically too long or too well, you will not have too much of faith in that person. Mostly it's like that, yeah. And you're looking elsewhere for something else. And, you know, like last time I told the story about um, Guru Amadas, uh, the Sikh Guru. Yes. His uh, brother-in-law, uh, is a, a guru already, Guru Angat, yes. But uh, all his life he has never gone to him. <laughs> he go to Himalaya, to the Holy Shrine, and he go to bath in the Ganges, and he go looking for all the statues around India to, to beg for a knowledge. Uh, he has nothing until he's 70 years old already. And then he really sincerely wants and suddenly God have helped him, <laughs> yet that uh, lead him to his uh, brother-in-law next door. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very funny. Understand? Yeah? He went all over. He went to the most dangerous place in India, you know, like in the Himalaya. Places are not always safe, eh? Yeah. Sometimes the cliff is very steep, yeah? and very deep, and the Ganges River is down there, and you climb in on the mountain, and the, the road is about this big, you know? And it's uh, uh, slippery because of glacier, you know? And if you slip your, your foot, that's it. Not even God can help you, nothing can help you. But they <laughs> went to all these kind of pilgrimages, hoping to find the truth there, yeah. Their sincerity is very, very uh, laudable, yeah, but the outcome don't have, yes. I have also been there too. I'm not laughing at these people. I'm just telling you, we are silly. <laughs> we go everywhere and we miss the point, yeah. But you are not that silly. You never went to Himalaya. <laughs> you got it just like that, huh? Smart people. <laughs> You see, like this guru of 70 years old, later he became a guru even. Yes, because he was so sincere and humble. He knew his time is short, and he devoted all his time day and night to serve, uh, you know, his uh, brother-in-law like a guru, truly. And he was very, very humble, very, very humble and very devoted day and night. No matter what, he do it for his master. He's like a servant in the house, that much, yeah. Just a brother-in-law, you know? But after he was awakened, he knew that, oh, he's a guru, so no doubt. And he devotes all his time, day and night for him, even though he's already 70 years old, something then. But he go and uh, fetch wood, you know, chop wood, fetch water, clean the house, cooking wash the dishes, wash the clothes for all the children of his guru and all that. He was so devoted, so humble, that uh, the, even the son of this present guru treated him like a servant. So after he has became a master, even <laughs> after 70 years old, he became a master. Uh, when Guru Angad uh, passed away, he gave him the mantle, and he became a master, one of the Sikh guru, very famous. At 70 years old something, after 70, you don't count anymore. <laughs> no need. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, we normally look down on this, we think, oh, too old already, what else can he do? But he lived until 120, so he has so long time. 50 years of service. Ah, oh, who can live that long sometimes, yeah? I mean, most of the master. They became master when they are a little older already, yes? So it would be nice if he can serve 40 years, 30 years, you know what I mean? 50 years is a lifetime for a master, huh? Okay. So after he became a master, huh? his nephew, yeah, his nephew, looked out upon him because the son thought that his father would have passed the mantle on to him instead. It's like a family business, you know, why give it to somebody else outside? Even his uncle, you know? But it's not real uncle. You see, 
in-law, you know, uncle-in-law. So he was very angry with the Guru Amadas. And he was very, very arrogant, yeah. He always find something to quarrel with the old Guru, yeah, the, the so-called servant Guru, yeah, older one. And very jealous and very haughty and treated him like dirt. Uh, so one day, the son eh, of the deceased Guru, Angat, uh, passing by the new Guru, the old one, yeah, 70 plus Guru, passing by with a horse uh, like this, you know, uh, don't even go down from the horse and see the Guru sit there. And he was asking him, uh, you know, uh, what for you grow a bear like that? You think you grow bear, then you look like my father, and then you can be a master, huh? huh? You are just a servant. You know, all kind of things he talked. And your beard is just like the, the tail of my horse, nothing more, <laughs> nothing less. Oh, why on earth you have to grow such a bear like that? So the guru uh, came down from his uh, days, you know, from his chair, and uh, uh, on the floor, and he used his beer to, to clean the shoes of that haughty sons of his past master. He said, I grow my beer so I can brush your shoes with it. And since then, the son became better, huh? Yeah. That is how a saint overcome an enemy, nothing else. Since then, the son, the son of the ex-guru never bothered him again. I hope his heart changed also. Did he change? Yes. He did. You see? It's good. It's how we change people. Hmm? Yeah. It's uh, very difficult to change people with something else, you know, such a people like that. Yeah? I was in Florida once, huh? and I lived next to a neighbor who was very difficult. <laughs> That house used to belong to him also, you know? So even though he sold it to someone else and then uh, sold it again and again, he still thinks it's uh, his property somehow. And it's very difficult for him to, <laughs> to let somebody live there in peace, you know? So he always said, this tree belongs to me and that place also mine, you know? The fence normally should not be here and all that, you know? I said, so where should the fence be? He said, over there. I said, okay, over there it shall be. <laughs> and then we moved the, the border over there for him. And ever since then, he doesn't bother us anymore. He doesn't keep coming and say, this wrong, that wrong, <laughs> and the other thing wrong. Yeah, neighbors sometimes like that. Just uh, one meter of uh, land, <laughs> he can feel very <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> if it belonged to you, yeah. He's just making trouble because his heart cannot be pacified that somebody else took his uh, house. He has two houses, you know, that belong to one compound, but he divided into two, and he sold one, which I got, and the other one he rented. Yeah. But he couldn't let go, you know, so he always come over and say something, this and that and others. <laughs> so we moved the fence, and he's very happy. Yeah. It's like that. Uh -huh. This is a very uh, strange the mind, yeah? We don't live long in this world, but we're very possessive sometimes. And we, we make things important. We make things more important than it is, and we regard things that are important. In fact, they are not. Yeah, we make important things out of nothing, a, a mountain out of molehill, yeah? Right? That's what they say. So. All we do is just have to watch our minds, yeah, and not watching why the guy is standing there. <laughs> watch us. That's why I give you the diary. Every day, really check it up. Mm -hmm. And then slowly we eliminate all the undesired uh, traits of habit that we did not even know we have. Only when we check every day, then we know truly like that. It's difficult, but try it. That's how people became better, yeah? In the old time, they do that also. You know, like some people, they have two jar, you know? And then uh, if they do something bad, they put up black beans in there, 
If they do something good, they put a white bean. If they don't do anything, then they don't have any black or white. So every day, that's how they check up themselves. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do that also. ตาเราเอาเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเลยเล
nhiều khi nếu mà chưa có làm nghiệp chướng nhiều quá yeah. thì mình có thể là uh, lên cao hơn cái cảnh giới mà mình mà từ đó mình xuống nữa yeah. à, còn nếu mà làm nghiệp chướng nhiều thì chưa chắc đã lên được cái cảnh giới mà mình đã bỏ để mình xuống đây yeah. tùy theo hả thì yeah. người nào cũng vậy thôi ha ok yeah. xuống đây bị kéo lôi dữ lắm tội nghiệp lắm ôi già Yeah. tôi thấy tội nghiệp mấy người tôi mất cả khổ vậy chưa còn <cười> không thôi ăn rồi đi ngủ cho sướng đi <cười> tội gì mà ban đêm mới ôm giờ này ngủ đây ban đêm ôm làm việc cứ cả ngày cái đêm ở dưới này tôi hành khổ <cười> khổ lắm mà. con thấy nhiều khi mình ngồi thiền mình ở trong nhà cái hay mình đi thiền đường nhiều mình thiền cái mình thấy lên nhảy cái đi ra ngoài đường không có làm gì hết đi vô xe lửa hay là đi ra phố một cái về là thấy sụt xuống liền <cười> thì nó như vậy chứ sao? lên xuống lên xuống ngoài <cười> thì vậy chứ làm sao bây giờ không sao đâu không sao đâu lên xuống là cái lúc đó thôi yeah. nhưng mà mình mình cố gắng thì bữa nay một chút kia một chút yeah. giờ họ giữ đó, ở, ở, ở thiên đàng của có ghi hết á yeah. <cười> xuống không sao đâu yeah. ví dụ bây giờ mình vô mình học đại học rồi hiểu chưa yeah. mình năm thứ nhất đại học rồi ha À, thì vô trong trường thì mình nghe nói trên trời dưới đất đó à, nghe sướng quá rồi ok vậy. mà mình chạy ra ngoài lát quên mất tiêu à thấy chưa à, mất tiêu nhưng mà, mà ngày mai vô học tiếp chứ yeah. à, đâu có mất cái cái lớp năm thứ nhất đâu yeah. à, nhiều khi mình quên thôi yeah. à, với lại nghe nhiều quá lát cũng quên đi ha à, yeah. nhưng mà đâu phải như vậy là mình tuột xuống mình học lại trường trung học đâu yeah. hiểu chưa yeah. à, nhưng khi mình nghỉ hè 3 tháng ăn chơi quên hết trơn hết trơn nhưng mà đâu có sao yeah. vô đó mình ôn lại chút xíu cái mình lên năm thứ hai yeah. à, đã lên rồi không có xuống đừng lo ok ha yeah. trừ khi nghĩa là mình ghê gớm lắm nghĩa là phạm tội nặng lắm hay là cố tình hay là phỉ bán chánh uh, pháp hay là làm hại cho sư phụ làm hại đồng tu cái đó thì tôi khó khó khăn thôi yeah. chứ còn nếu mình đi ngon ra ngoài mà mình bị phân tâm á ha hay yeah. là bị những cái từ trường chia sẻ chút không không có sao đâu ok yeah. Ừ. chứ không thôi tôi chỉ mất công tôi bữa nay mai mất rồi thôi tôi mất công <cười> hiểu chưa dạ yeah. à, không có sao không yeah. không có quên đi đâu đâu ok dạ yeah. mình vô mình quên mình phân tâm nữa cái linh hồn không quên yeah. thiên đàng không quên có ghi yeah. hết đàng hoàng hiểu chưa yeah. ví dụ như mình đi học đại học quá nhiều khi mình vô trường mình cũng hơi phân tâm chút có chọc phá gì đó nhưng mà cũng có mặt đó hả thầy có ghi đàng hoàng này có vô mà phải không <cười> Rồi bữa nay mình lười nhưng mà mai mốt mình hối hận mình 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 bộ lại bù lại ha yeah. thì mình khi mà mình tu mình thi cũng cũng đậu hả yeah. tại mình có đi học mà ghi danh đàng hoàng phải không <cười> mỗi ngày có hả đi vô lớp có ok rồi yeah. chà nhiều quá sư phụ không có mời cà phê được nha <cười> lẽ ra khách tới nhà <cười> không gà chay thì cũng vịt gà chay <cười> mà thôi kệ dòm nhau cười đủ rồi dạ yeah. 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 chào sư phụ um, nói vậy lo viên hết đó dạ yeah, uh, Uh, con là có người thiết kế ở bên USA á. Ừ. Bây giờ ở bên uh, USA á, sắp mở ba căn nữa của Loving Hut. Oh. Dạ, ở bên LA chắc một tháng nữa sẽ mở. Ok. Uh, Florida chắc khoảng hai, hai tuần nó mở. Ở bên đó mở nhiều quá hả? Dạ. Yeah. Mà Tại... có uh, kêu bằng business có tốt không? Ồ, oh, tốt lắm. Được. Bây giờ mới đây uh, một tháng trước á, ở bên San Francisco mở đó, 200 người một ngày á. Ồ, oh, dạ yeah. hả? Wow. Đây, đông lắm, đông, đông mở cho người ta ăn chứ không mở đâu, không có chỗ đâu người ta đi ăn. Very good. Đông tu làm rất là mệt, nhưng mà mệt tốt. Nhưng mà vui mà... lắm. Vui lắm. Okay. Dạ, dạ. Tha mở ừ. đó còn hơn mở oh. chuyện khác nha. <cười> mệt đầu óc còn cực hơn là mệt thân thể ha. Ok. Dạ. Um, Linh có đi bên New York á, tám ừ. phần trăm ở trong cái Manhattan có chỗ là cái chỗ đông nhất á, ừ. ở khu đông nhất á, giống như rất là nhiều hàng nhà hàng thịt thịt đó đi yeah. <cười> đóng cửa hết rồi, yeah. đóng cửa rồi, do đóng cửa <cười> thì tám chục phần trăm đóng cửa, giống như tăng tăng ế lắm á, ế à, sắp đóng cửa, đó. ờ, đúng rồi, okay. Okay. biết biết sư phụ biết biết thì mình có rất là nhiều đồng tu đang muốn mở là bên anh dạ 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 cảm ơn sư phụ nhiều đất nó cũng chín chục phần trăm nhà hàng tạo cũng ba ừ. ba ờ tổ quá tổ quá <cười> <cười> lẽ ra mình mình thấy người ta phá sản một buồn dầm cho ta <cười> <cười> nhưng mà cái này phải thành thật nói tôi không buồn gì hết <cười> mừng dùm cho họ nữa mừng dùm cho họ bớt nghiệp đi nếu mà họ mà tiếp tục bán đắt hả tối ngày cứ chặt gà chặt vịt hoài là cái tay chân đó là mai mốt không biết đi đâu ạ thấy chưa nghiệp chướng nặng này lắm 
như vậy họ phá sản như vậy nhưng mà linh hồn họ được cứu à, à biết đâu tự nhiên cái họ tỉnh ngộ ra không có còn chặt gà chặt vịt đó cái tự nhiên tỉnh ngộ ra cái, cái mở hàng chay hả hoặc làm những chuyện khác có công đức hơn nhiều chứ đâu phải phá sản là không tốt đâu ha cái này phá sản là tốt lắm <cười> mấy nhà hàng thịt phá sản như nào tốt mình thấy cho tốt cho địa cầu nữa họ bán giống như năm chục phần trăm off trời ơi tức là cái gì cũng hạ giá xuống năm phần trăm á bốn năm phần trăm á À, bây giờ đâu cũng vậy hết đó. ok vậy tốt quá rồi ok thôi có việc làm rồi có việc làm rồi. Dạ. bây giờ không có chuyện gì làm cứ mở nhà hàng thôi nhà hàng rẻ mà bây giờ bán rẻ bốn năm phần trăm bán rẻ ok very good đi đâu không có nhà hàng sướng không à hồi hồi đó giờ chỉ có cái niềm mơ ước duy nhất đó. đi đâu không có đồ ăn thì cái hồi đó sư phụ hồi mới đi học Hoàng phá vô trời đi kiếm nhà hàng dài cực lắm Cái ăn lăng nhăng á mà Bánh mì với lại cái gì á Cá chấp gì đó Hả? Dạ à, thưa sư phụ à, Ngài con coi chương trình uh, truyền hình ừ. Của sư phụ á Đào sư phụ truyền hình vô thần sư á ừ. Thấy là rất là phấn khởi Nhiều người um, ủng hộ chương trình sư phụ ừ. Và ngay cả những cái người mà tên tuổi Những người mà đinh tinh bằng bạc á Ừ. cũng ủng hộ con rất mừng dạ yeah, dạ yeah. yeah. con mong muốn làm sao con số nó là cái người đàn trai đó ừ. càng ngày càng tăng tăng lên cho nhanh dạ yeah. sẽ đi tăng cầu này biến chuyển nó thật nhanh sẽ tăng bác ơi sẽ ăn yeah. chay hết phấn yeah. khởi yeah. hả phấn khởi lắm hả yeah. <cười> ai đâu nữa À, hai vợ chồng con ở Phần Lan đấy, à. mà làm bán đồ chay đấy thì à. chúng con đi gọi là phòng vòng quanh hết Phần Lan là chín năm nay rồi. Nhưng mà bây giờ là tình hình là về ca nhạc đây thì cái bến người ta cho thuê rất là mắc. Mua bán em... chứ không phải mình cứ cái xe mình đậu mình bán ra không có không có nhà hàng lớn thì thì làm nhà hàng nhỏ hay làm cái gì mà take away thì à. không được nữa. À. Hả? Con vẫn đang đi bán có một cái hút mà có một cái chỗ rồi mình mình làm sao nấu nó lấy đem về nhà ăn nó cũng được chứ từ 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 làm lần lên còn em cứ du không thì còn thì em em trai con không có ở đây nhưng mà ở Việt Nam mới mở nhà hàng được uh, mấy tháng nay ừ. nhưng mà nói lại là mỗi ngày đều trên dưới 200 khách wow. không có ngày nào dưới 100 khách cả wow. à, à, <cười> Tên, ở gần, nó... Hà Nội thôi đó hả wow. ở Hà Nội thôi mà vâng. tốt vậy đó hả tốt mà đông đông khách lắm wow. đông khách thì uh... ai cũng ăn chơi hả rất là nhiều wow. sinh uh, chủ yếu là sinh viên các trường đại học wow. tại họ biết đó nha họ vâng. coi trong computer họ biết oh, vâng. mấy người là tốt tốt ok very good I like that. Uh, I like that. European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a vice president. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. Tout le monde sait bien, si on veut rendre notre planète soutenable, il va falloir réduire notre consommation de viande, ça on le sait bien. My name is Jan Solm, I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green to save the planet. Mà ông mặn là ông la à, người nào mà nói động tới sư phụ là chết với ông okay. <cười> <cười> yeah. Bây giờ dữ vậy đó Ok Bây giờ cái 
ông ăn chay rồi ông hiểu rồi ông coi ừ. đài sư phụ á ừ. người nào mà nói đoạn thứ sư phụ nói chứ có làm được giống bả không <cười> thấy không người ta đó, phụ nữ một mình mà người ta làm được bao nhiêu chuyện đó ờ ừ, đúng ờ, rồi dạ. rồi cho phép luôn đứa con gái à. 10, 15, 16 tuổi Trên cho luôn. thọ thọ tâm mẫn à, cho cô đó thọ tâm mẫn luôn ok vậy tốt yeah. thì cái chứ họ tại họ không hiểu chứ hả yeah. làm việc cực khổ lắm được cái gì đâu phải yeah. không <cười> có bao nhiêu tiền cũng ra hết <cười> mà có tiền mà nó chạy ra cũng hay đó chứ sợ nó không có <cười> có mà nó chạy ra cũng lỡ lắm rồi ok ok cảm ơn ha giữ, giữ tiền được tốt à, không, không cần phải giữ thì mới đủ xài phải không à, đủ xài thì còn dư cho người khác là tốt lắm rồi ha à, không cần nhiều à, nghĩa là đủ đủ để cho cho người ta hay là làm những việc này kia cái nọ đó ha chứ cũng phải sư phụ giữ để ăn <cười> tôi ở nhà ăn giản dị hiểu rồi ha <cười> tôi mua cơm cái gì đó gạo lứt muối mè à. ăn cho đặng cho nó vừa bổ mà nó vừa rẻ mà vừa dễ đó mà ở nhà sư phụ tại không có đồ ăn khác chỉ có gạo lứt muối mè thôi hiểu chưa còn có ăn thêm nữa là miếng đậu hũ sống với lại cái miếng dưa chuột gì đó không có đồ ăn tại vì không có rảnh mà đi chợ mua cái mấy chỗ xa đó cũng có đồ ăn nhưng mà không có ngon lành gì lắm hiểu không <cười> nó xúc mà cái giải thưởng hòa bình Nobel đó mà à, ăn cũng ngán thấy chưa thành cái gạo lứt muối mè là để cho nó vừa đủ dinh dưỡng vậy đó dầu không có đồ ăn không sao vậy đó nhiều người bệnh mà ăn gạo lứt mà hết rồi à, rồi tại vì mua đồ ăn không được mà không có rảnh đi mua mình ăn gì cho nó nó nó, nó khỏe không <cười> mấy chó cũng ăn gì <cười> thích lắm Ừ. Ăn, cơm à, ăn cơm đó phải ngày nào cũng ăn cơm nhưng mà để có thí dụ buổi sáng bên nhà sư phụ là sư phụ ăn một ngày nhiều nhất là hai bữa ha không chó cũng vậy thôi ừ. con cũng tập ăn à, ngày hai bữa thôi. buổi sáng thì mình có cái gì ăn nấy à hiểu không yeah. bánh mì hay là những cái thứ gì mà họ làm sẵn đó mà ha yeah. mà sư phụ thường thường không có ăn sáng <cười> thì ăn dồn với một bữa cho nó lẹ hiểu không nó ăn sáng còn ăn trưa ăn chiều nó trời ơi Tôi thấy ăn ít rồi thì cũng khỏe hơn. Ờ, ít rồi thì khỏe hơn. Ừ. Mà ý sư phụ nói ha, mà cái ông mà ông nấu đồ không ngon đó là ông cũng giúp cho sư phụ, đó. giúp cho mọi người trong nhà. Lại nấu đồ ngon ăn nhiều. <cười> <cười> ăn nhiều thì ngồi khó, mập rồi không? Tại ra cái khi mà mình ăn ăn ngon thì ok, ngon miệng cũng sướng vậy ha. Còn ăn dở thì khỏe, nó ốm. À, ngồi thì đỡ có cấn cái chỗ này phải đâu. Nhưng người không ngồi không được thì nó bự quá. Cái bụng bự quá ngồi không được. Ngồi xưa đất cũng được phải ngồi ghế, hiểu không? À, ngồi cái nó cấn chỗ này nè. Thì sư phụ thấy cái gì cũng tốt hết á. Thí dụ mà người nào nấu ăn ngon, ok thì ăn thử ngon miệng nó cũng sướng ha, cũng vui vẻ ha. Còn người nào nấu ăn dở thì cũng cảm ơn ông. <cười> dữ quá không muốn ăn <cười> ăn chút cái thôi mình không có nói cái chuyện ngoài kia nói chuyện trong nhà thôi chứ ở ngoài kia phải nói cho ngon ở nhà thì nó khác phải không ở nhà sư phụ thấy ăn giản gì nó khỏe nữa nó không có nó không có mất thì giờ nhiều phải không nấu nồi cơm gỗ lứt để sẵn đó, người đứa nào đói lúc nào đói đem vô bỏ một tô rượu quậy với cái gì đó muối mè. mè với bỏ chút muối hay là xì dầu vô là xong á là cắn hai miếng dưa chuột nữa <cười> dưa chuột đậu hũ gì đó ha nếu có nhiều khi ăn không thôi cơm muối mè thôi đủ rồi lâu lâu người ta tới nhà hàng ta ăn cho nó ngon miệng không cơm mình cũng nấu giống như ở nhà thôi vậy thôi dẹp mình nấu cái gì mì gói cho rồi <cười> hả ta tới năm phút ra liền ta hài lòng như cái Ờ, nấu à. nấu lẹ lắm yeah, nhưng yeah. mà ngon dạ yeah, dạ yeah. yeah, very good vậy mới tốt ừ, nấu mới ngon nè không mà lẹ nữa ha yeah. mà sạch sẽ cái điều đó là quan trọng nhất đừng bắt ta đợi dài của nó miếng chảy lòng thông rồi chừng mà đem đem phở ra nó trộn với nước miếng hết rồi <cười> nó pha loãng mất đi luôn, <cười> thành ra phải làm cho mau chứ lẹ để ta ngồi cho đợi hoài. À, nấu ngon cũng dở, 
Ôi giời ơi, cười nhiều quá đây mệt quá <cười> Ngồi đây chọc cười sư phụ hoài Hả? Thôi cảm ơn thương quý vị, ok Rất lớn Hả? Rồi, rồi, ok, ok Cảm ơn nha, về về mạnh giỏi ha Dạ, mạnh giỏi Làm được gì hay cái đó nha Dạ